Lore Miniatures is at it again. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the new Lore Miniatures Kickstarter for a whole new wave of some really great alternative Imperial Guardsmen called the Ultravern. So you may remember about this time last year in 2021, we were talking about this set of STL miniatures you could purchase and of course print out to as many as you wanted or do whatever uh, for lore miniatures and the Kickstarter went great. You can see here that I think they made uh, 25,000 Canadian dollars and now they're back since they fulfilled this and have it all out and there's multiple turrets and there's multiple heavy weapons and there's a whole bunch of duders and there's way more than, than just this right here on that particular Kickstarter. So now they have a new Kickstarter that's gonna be coming out on uh, May 10th, I believe, and they actually pushed it back a week because I wasn't able to record. We've had a lot of, a lot of craziness here around the studio, so thank you to them. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's why we're helping to promote them. Of course, they wanted this uh, from us, so we were more than happy to still do it. Just had to push things back a little bit, of course. So this particular Kickstarter, uh, let me talk about business you know and, and and stuff you see out in the ministry space you see people do kickstarters and they disappear and they never come back or you know their kickstarter doesn't do well or you know their kickstarter does great and they do a million dollars and you know and then it just all falls off and falls apart i think lore miniatures from talking to them and seeing what they've done between the two kickstarters which i'm about to show you here in a second is is really good and, it, and this is what we need in my opinion more of in the hobby space y'all somebody that comes out with a great starter set of something uh just very small and start small then gets bigger as they get, you know, they, they build up, they, they figure out, you know, their offerings, they provide the value, they, you know, get things out to everybody in the time that they said they would. Then they come back with a second Kickstarter with more stuff to add to the first Kickstarter, you know, because this these things take time. A lot of folks do this on the side, you know, maybe eventually a year from now, we'll be talking about their new full time job, which is developing this whole range of miniatures, which are let's talk about like design here, right? If we go over to their Facebook, they have a whole bunch of stuff posted up. They have all the color pictures and things, uh, of course, that um, are, are going to be up here. And you can see they have all sorts of sketches for Calvary coming out. They're, you know, engaging with the community, talking to folks about, um, you know, just, hey, tank designs. And, you know, they're taking these design elements. They're obviously getting a lot of inspiration and things from a lot of different sci-fi genres, which is the way to do it, in my opinion. Um, it's not about necessarily copying and doing one-for-one -one ports and trying to throw things up and sell STLs that you shouldn't be doing. Actually putting in the legwork, doing, doing the work itself, and providing the value out there, I think is really important in this thing. Two of my favorite things about this Kickstarter here are these hurricane fighter variants of their transport which we actually have printed out and we're going to show you here in a minute um but these are just really rad i like this i hope they make both of these to be quite honest um maybe this is a variant gunship to this transport and then this is just as a variant fighter and obviously you can see a lot of design elements here you know for, to stuff we've seen in the past from companies like games workshop of course but games workshop borrows a lot from real world you know you can see a lot of elements uh, here, you know, especially to the Valkyrie or whatever they're going to call this. I think the Hurricane Fighter, I think it's going to be, you know, it obviously draws a lot from, you know, um, older helicopters in the Vietnam era. Of course, some Russian designs and things like that, you know, Cold War and also, you know, Korean War. So you, you everybody draws everything from everywhere. And I feel like that's the right way to go. And I really like the value for this Kickstarter. I really like these fighters. And I really like this uh, Rust Walker thing that I'm about to show you over on their Kickstarter page. Okay, so back to the set itself. Um, their last one made 25,000 Canadian dollars. Of course, you know, uh, hopefully this this time around they can make a little bit more. Let me show you so you can see, a, a, you know, a really quick preview of what's coming out. So they have the Rust Walker. They have an artillery piece, which I unfortunately did not get to print out. Um, they got this guy here, which is the cavalry leader. They have a cavalry squad. They got some chonkers here, some some ogres, uh, which are really cool looking. And, and you know, un, you know, it's, it's really cool stuff that we haven't seen before. Now, money wise, because uh, that's you know always what we want to vote with uh, our hobby dollars. You can obviously pledge. 
uh, you can pledge 55 Canadian to get the patrol tier, which is this right here. The Grim Companions, which is just kind of expanding out the, their, their first Kickstarter a bit. The Mud Truck APC, which it is an APC, but it does have, um, you can see the hatches in the back right there, of course, but it does have um, some guns on it too. So you could, you know, in theory, count it as Lehman Russ, perhaps. Um, uh, the Russ Walker, really neat. I like this thing. It's it's very cool. I didn't realize the legs that you could pose the legs. And I don't think I posed. No, and mine looks buster. Uh, but if you're not an idiot and you pose the legs appropriately, you can do some really cool uh, looking um, kind of strut thing. Actually, I don't think I even printed that leg out. I think I mirrored the other leg like a dum dum. Yep, that's what I did. Anyways, don't be a dum dum. <laughs> Sometimes when you're trying to print out a bunch of stuff really quick to, to get stuff done, you don't you don't realize all the options you have until you go back and see cool pictures and you're like, why didn't I do that? Because I'm a dummy. All right, well, then I'd have to just print out another one. Oh no, a squad of three, darn. Anyway, so you can definitely get some variants there, you know, if you mirror bits and then you could even have one with the, the right leg up, you know, and I think one of the stretch goals that we haven't seen pictures for is alternate weapons, which would be really cool too. So that being said, uh, getting back to all this on the side here. So that's the battalion tier, um, or excuse me, the early, ooh, the patrol tier. You can do the early bird for 100, which is basically all of this, plus all the extras that I'll show you here in a second at the bottom. And then of course, once that sells out, you're gonna have to spend 120 Canadian. And then the merchant tier, if you wanna actually retail this stuff, uh, it prints out pretty well. Um, we, a lot of these tank elements are hollow. And for our printers, our printers are a little bit different than, you know, what everybody out there might have, you know, off the shelf from like Amazon and stuff and, you know, uh, Frozen and all the anti-cubics and all that stuff. Uh, we have to do a little bit more on our end to get these things up and going. And that being said, they still print it out amazingly. Uh, we had to punch a few holes in a different, different kind of spots, but that's nothing that you'll have to do. Everything, these files are all going to come ready to print for you guys, which is, you know, super dope. And they have supported and unsupported. Unfortunately, we have to support all of our stuff, but it's all automatic, which is super nice too. Uh, so, how much is that in real actual money? Because we always talk about what they want and what actual money is. So here in the States, uh, Canadian $55 is, I want to say it was, I looked it up, it was roughly 42, which isn't too bad. And in Great British Pounds, of course, it goes down a lot, a lot more to about $35, so, or 35 GBP. So that being said, uh, still pretty affordable to get the STLs for all these miniatures right here and print them to your heart's content. You obviously can get this free one right here, which we also print out, the Commandant uh, Mila, I think it is. Yeah, Mila. And then, of course, if you want to go with the Battalion, you can get all the cavalry. You can get the chonks. They call them the tyrants. They're obviously ogres. I really like the design of these shields, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to show it to you. But it basically has a slot right here, uh, which I think is pretty neat. And it's like actually padding on the inside. Cause you always wonder like, hey, these guys are gonna be holding these shields for, for forever, right? Like, and they're gonna be holding it up and it's gonna, you know, it's, it's heavy and it's metal. Like, how do they actually hold it there? Like, do they have gloves on? These look like they have padding on the inside and there's like a slot where the, the arm actually kind of goes into the slot, which I thought was really neat. Like, I really like their designs. They're, they're, they're almost like a cross between 40K and dust and maybe like Starship Troopers, maybe a little bit. I don't know. But I really like what they're going with here. And I like the first set. I really like the second set. There's uh, a Trench Devil, which is a flame tank, the artillery piece, and then the Hurricane gunship. But I think they were trying to do fighters too. And this thing is really neat. I didn't realize, I was kind of on the fence at first. I didn't realize how cool it actually was till we got it printed out. So here's all the pledges and things. Now, the only, the only kind of drawback I feel like in my mind now, I don't know, maybe they'll add it in here because this is a promo page. This might not actually be what it all looks like when it goes live. But I thought maybe they could throw, oh, I guess they're saying that pledges are a little bit less in US dollars. Oh, that's cool. So that worked out even better. I just did the math. What I would like to see maybe, and I'll, I'll give them the feedback, is the ability to, if you didn't get this stuff from the first Kickstarter, maybe you could pick that up in a bundle, like call it the, you know, Super Mega Battle Force, or I don't know, something like that, where you could get both of them kind of bundled together, but not as a disservice to the people that pledged the first one and allowed them to get to this point. So it's always a delicate balance of value and not 
you know, giving field badsies to the people that supported you at the beginning. Now, here's some of the stretch goals, an extra two chonkers, um, some extra duders, some extra calorie, a medic, which I haven't seen. Really interested in this Rust Walker Hab variant. Now, remember, the last one was 25,000 um, Canadian. So they're saying, you know, they want a little bit more. And then this is in US dollars, so I don't know what that's about. Either way, I'm sure they'll clean it all up, um, whether it's all in Canadian or US dollars when it goes live. Artillery crew for the Graham battery um, are an artillery tank, which I haven't seen, and I'm definitely keen to see that one. Sniper squad's okay. I love snow speeders. Like, if I played historicals, I would want to be Finland because they had all the dudes with the, like, the sweet winter camo and the snowshoes just run around like you know, guerrilla warfare, that that really tickles my my hobby pickle when it comes to like this stuff. We've never seen a snowmobile squad. Like think about like a snowmobile squad or like the snowcat from uh, G.I. Joe or like some of those snow vipers for G.I. Joe, like back in the day in the 80s, if you remember, if not Google it, they're dope. Like I want to see some of that in the Grimdark on the tabletop. I think that would be pretty neat. Diorama base for the Hurricane gunship. Yeah, assault tank. I can't even imagine what that would be like. New fighter aircraft, weaponized mammoth. Oh my, that better be an elephant. That better be like a literal mammoth with an artillery piece. It looks like it is. I have not seen this, but I'm definitely keen to see this. So either way, lots of cool stuff here. Very neat, a lot of value. I still feel like, you know, from the first Kickstarter, hopefully they'll combo an option for you so you can get those files in the second Kickstarter maybe, do some early birds and all that sort of stuff. But let's take a look at the miniatures because that's really what it's all about. You can see renders, you can go over to our Facebook page and look at the art, look at, you know, the painted miniatures and stuff because those always look dope. But what do they actually look like printed out? Now here is one of the, uh, the cooler miniatures, I think, from uh, their line here and this is the I think this was the warlord uh, that comes with this really cool dope base here and it's uh, it's beveled and so you can put magnets in there still if you really need to but and you'll see painted versions of all this stuff here in the near future but man it's, it's just so crisp and there's just so much you know cool design like a dead dude and going over the top on the trench here looks like a, a cut down tree right there it's got this dope dope flag banner and he's just uh, he's just getting it now as far as like you know sizing and things like this they all size up pretty good now obviously that's going to be rather larger compared to something like a, a death core krieg horse which is just on a non-scenic base or something like that and it'll only come up to like here but you get the idea you know they are the infantry is uh, a bit scaled up from warhammer 40k and of course this is the uh death core from forge world so they are a little bit smaller but that being said you know they are they are scaled up for a reason you know you can paint these guys and I don't really think it's that big of a deal unless you already have like a bunch of existing stuff, you know, like, mm, that might not ma match, I suppose. But yeah, they're they're about primary size. They're about 38 millimeters tall on the infantry, uh, that is, you know, and they have a bunch of like uh, cool guys here with like respirators and things and, and guns. Now we didn't print out all the infantry, unfortunately, because we just didn't have time to get it all done. But here's one of the tyrants, the uh, the, the ogre looking things that I think is really neat. And like I said, they have this like, uh, it's basically like uh, a little bit of padding in there and they just kind of slots in and they hold this shield, which is really cool. And you know, um, you know, has a bunch of, I don't know why it has a slot in it if they don't have a gun. Hopefully they'll come out with gun variants because that'd be pretty neat. And he's got the hammer there and some chains and I'm not sure how that all that works, like how it keeps them in check because it seems like they could still kind of run amok and well they don't have chain maybe they just keep them chained up when they're not uh when they're not battling i guess i i don't really know but the, the miniature itself is cool very well designed very crisp uh, detail work on all that you know and they all, i think this was one part um when it printed out i'm pretty sure it was that guy was one part a lot of these are just one part believe it or not uh which is pretty cool and then here's one of the infantry models that looks super fresh and it's not you know on the normal oval size base that you're gonna need very, very cool stuff there. Can do a lot with these. And I think there's three different ones and then there's gonna add, I like the grenades on the back, the grenade packs. Um, and they're gonna add uh, more if they hit those stretch goals. And then vehicle wise, oh, and here's the freebie that you can download yourselves, uh, the Commandant, and she's pretty cool up on her scenic base. Now I didn't glue her down because it'd be hard to like kind of paint all of this, um, but she would slot into a lot of different armies I think just by herself. Uh, for sure, you know, if you were looking to do something like that. And again, a little bit upscaled, you know, when it comes to uh, the things we were talking about there, because there, there's a reason for that. And, you know, I get it. It's an artistic kind of sort of thing. And I think at the end of the day, people just like to 
it, it's just like, do you want to paint this? This is super teeny, remember? This is four drop from 2006 onwards. All of the, the ends of their carbines break off religiously. Like, uh, I have to replace them. Um, the plastic ones are much bigger, you know? So I feel, I feel like it's a good decision design-wise, you know, just for longevity purposes in general. Um, and then there's the uh the rust rust walker here like i said mine isn't as cool looking because i just mirrored the the leg here but i believe there is legs in there so you can have three different variants if you want and then of course you can twist this or magnetize it if you want we just kind of glued it down but i really like the design elements you know it reminds me of something like from star wars you know with the scout walker slash dust slash 40k of course so there's a lot of a lot of design elements in play here that i think still kind of resonates with a lot of folks this is by far my favorite single miniature out of this new set i like the i like the chunks i like the ogres for sure um but i feel like that uh maybe if they had some gun variants they, they might be my new favorite and then tank wise this is really cool let me get the light on this nice and Nice and good. So tank wise, this is pretty neat. Um, it's not very heavy at all, believe it or not. It's actually pretty super light. I have a Chimera around here, here we go. So the Chimera is barely only a little bit lighter than this particular APC tank. And as you can see, it lines up pretty good and it is about the same size. So if you're, you know, trying to use those in games of like 40K or something, that'd be cool. Uh, these, you don't have to glue, oh, I guess I glued, I didn't think I glued them in, but I guess I did. Uh, these, you could magnetize in here if you really wanted to, if they come out with other um, weapon uh, bits and things like that. This is actually a bit, so maybe they would have to kind of redesign that uh, potentially, but everything else kind of slots together really easily. Great detail work. I mean, on the treads and everything here, it all prints out fantastic. This is, uh, I think this is a 0.25 microns um, printing and everything lined out pretty good with a little bit of primer and I missed a couple of spots right there, but you can't see any lines in it, which is really good. And then this guy right here, is the flame tank, which again is about the same size as the Chimera or you know whatever you're looking to do. So you could use it in theory as a Hellhound if you really wanted to and, and you know 40K or something like that. And then it's got like all the tanks on the back and there is a full bottom uh, with a little bit of gapping. You know, and like I said, I had to put some drain holes on that because we have to print things a little bit differently than what y'all might have to do, but don't worry about any of that. Um, and then this bit here isn't glued in, so you can pull it out and maybe have a different one depending on what they end up doing or if they add something in, but it all slots it together and super, super easy to use uh, or to print out rather. And there really isn't any any noticeable you know flaws or anything that we didn't have the, the it, once you got these pulled off, all the supports and everything pulled off it's basically super easy to assemble them it's it's not even a thing um all the spaces are ready to go and then potentially my favorite is this uh the hurricane i guess this was this is also a gunship not a fighter uh and the only place that we really noticed print lines was like back here um, and I'm sure you could do some test prints and print things a little bit different, but that was the only print lines I really noticeably noticed. We printed the wings differently. Um, so these go with it a little bit. There, there is a little bit of print line in here, but also the primer isn't quite uh, as good of a job as I could have done. So I feel like I would just mirror this so that I know they print that way and then uh, it would pretty much be good. But this thing is super crisp and again, unless you really have a cell phone or a zoomed in you know, video, that's nothing you're really gonna see on the regular or anything like that. And they have the full cockpit um, so you can put pilots in. I think they, they might come out with a pilot for this too. I'm not exactly sure, but super good detail. And it's got the two rocket pods underneath. So two little spots for weapons. There's four landing gears. There's also, and of course I didn't grab one, but they have the slot and it does um, for, you know, the crosshatch uh, flight stands. So you can, that does fit and it will, you know, it will support the weight of this. Um, ours is a little bit heavier, but if you print it at home, this will be a lot lighter um, because there are some solid, um, design areas in this it isn't all hollow but it's not like obnoxious i would say this actually weighs less than the forge world um vulture gunship and it's gonna weigh a tad bit more than the valkyrie i feel like it is the same size as the valkyrie i didn't grab the valkyrie because uh it won't fit in the frame here unfortunately but this is just really cool and it's like i said uh this was a cool design there's two other cool designs that i hope they also do that since they have all this pretty much made um they could get all that together as well but very very cool stuff and of course they hopefully will hit some of those stretch goals uh, in the near future for uh, the rest of the miniatures that, you know, they have kind of on deck there. 
So overall, I feel like this is a really cool project to go ahead and support. Uh, and hopefully they can hit some of the stretch goals because I'm really curious what some of those designs are and I hope that they do hit some of those stretch goals uh, so that we can see them and hopefully get them in this particular Kickstarter here and not have to wait another year for their next Kickstarter that has all sorts of cool things like gargantuans and big tanks and all that and maybe new infantry i don't know but either way i feel like uh you know if you're in the imperial guard or you're into just infantry you know human infantry in general with big fighting machines uh this might be the kickstarter for you for whatever game you might be playing out there and obviously the miniatures are a little bit bigger uh than the existing stuff from games like games workshop but i think that just that helps you paint them a little bit better and you know overall you don't have to worry about the barrel snapping off you know 15 16 20 years later like some of the stuff I have, unfortunately. Uh, so that is it for this one. Make sure you check it out. We'll, of course, have the links uh, to the Kickstarter, which starts on May 10th. Uh, this video will probably come out a little bit sooner. So if it does come out, just click on, you know, the, hey, notify me on launch. So you get an email in case you forget about it to go back and check and get in, hopefully, on some of those really cool early bird deals. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching uh, this video and hope to see you again very soon. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikey bits.